of you are here to find out about comics and merchandise and all that cool stuff, raise your hand. All right. How many of you are here to find out the corporate future of Robotech after 2021? Raise your hand. Wow. Okay. Guess what? We're going to answer both questions. We aim to please, all right? Everybody wins at this panel, all right? So let's move on to our panel ground rooms. Folks, we encourage audio and video recording of the panel. Yes. Yes, you can actually record, we allow you to audio and video record this panel. And you can upload this to YouTube and SoundCloud if you want, okay? So that's fine with us as well, okay? We also encourage you all to use hashtag Robotech, hashtag Macross, and hashtag Anime Expo on social media. For everyone's enjoyment, we ask that you please silence all mobile devices, okay? And please hold all of your questions until the end, because we have time for Q&A. And with that taken care of, my fellow Robotech fans, members of the industry, and invited guests. Welcome to Los Angeles and to the Robotech and Harmony Gold, a reversal of fortune panel here at Anime Expo. All right, yes, you're all clap. You're free to laugh, clap, cheer, or do if you so choose. But it's my pleasure to introduce, and I ask you all please to clap, for my awesome panelists up here today. So please welcome Steve Yoon, our Vice President of New Media. Please welcome Tommy Yoon, our Creative Director. And you might notice we have a mystery guest up here. His name is Carlos. Yes. And we'll find out what Carlos is doing a little later on in the panel. And I will probably introduce myself. My name is Kevin McKeever. I am Vice President of Marketing for the Robotech franchise. Thank you. Now, normally, our panels, we showcase the merchandise in the pipeline, such as our new tabletop game, the Japan Make Games, which is shipping right now for $80, and you can order it right now at booth 3017. You can buy it right now, actually, at booth 3017 here at the Anime Expo. We also have a Southern Cross card game called Robotech Crisis Point. It is now shipping for $30. You can ask for it at your local game store. And of course, we have the plushies. Yes, from our awesome new license, Icon Heroes. We signed them up right before a deadline. We also have some great apparel from our friends at babiestees.com. They make Robotech t-shirts, hoodies, and hockey jerseys. <laughs> yes. We also have a new line of Robotech custom flight jackets. <laughs> and just last year, our new line of Robotech action figures have launched. Wave one features Rick, Max, Roy, Min Mei, and Miriam. No bed? <laughs> Wait, you want bed? Yeah! We ain't the police because wave two's got bed. <laughs> and Claudia. Eat that steak. <laughs> eat that steak, folks. We also have Claudia, Global, Rick in his normal uniform. And for you Lisa Hayes fans, we have Lisa as well. And our friends at Caliber Wings have a line of 172 die-cast metal models, starting with a Robotech F-14 Tomcat, officially licensed from Northup Grumman. These will be followed by a line of die-cast metal 
VF1s that will make their debut at San Diego Comic Con. This is the artwork on the box, and here is a picture of it. And these will be available starting in San Diego. And for you transforming toy fans out there, our friends at Kids Concept have you covered with their new line of 172 fully transformable VF1s. And if you might notice, folks, the LED lighting, they actually light up. They're very good. You're, you're really going to like these new Kids Concept VF1s. But folks, a lot of people would say, Kevin, this is wonderful and all, but I hate to say it, but it's all irrelevant because in September 2017, news broke that there was an arbitration ruling upheld by a California court. An anime news network reported, and I quote, a California court in June upheld a license agreement between Harmony Gold USA and Tanzanoko Productions affirming that Harmony Gold's license to the Super Dimension Fortress Macross, the Super Dimension Calvary Southern Cross, and Genesis Climber Mosfia will expire on March 14th, 2021. So you're probably asking yourself, so what did the court actually uphold? Well, the ruling stated that the licensing agreement between Harmony Gold and Tatsunoko is valid. However, without a renewal, Harmony Gold's license to the animated series Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito will expire on March 14th, 2021. Thank God. <laughs> After this news was made public, fans began to ask questions. What's Frontier? <laughs> we'll get yeah. to Macro Zero. Will Harmony Gold lose the license to Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosfia in 2021? And what about the future of Robotech after 2021? Let's tackle the first question. Will Harmony Gold actually lose the license to Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito in 2021? Yes. Harmony Gold and Tatsunoko were involved in intense negotiations for the renewal of Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito. However, those negotiations have since concluded. The reason being, <laughs> Harmony Gold and Tatsunoko signed an agreement to renew and extend the current license and amendments for Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito. To be blunt, Harmony Gold has renewed Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito, the rights for those shows. Robotech is safe and secure and will not repeat not be ending in 2021, as some anime insiders have reported. And there is more. Since this is a renewal and extension of the current agreements, all of Harmony Gold's rights to Macross, Southern Cross, and Mosquito will remain in full effect well into the future. There's also a statement by our chairman of Harmony Gold, Frank Agrama, which I will now read to you in full. Quote, over the past 35 years, we have been blessed to work with our friends at Tatsunoko on developing one of the world's greatest entertainment franchises. With our extension, we look forward to the next 35 years of working with Tatsunoko and our world-class business partners on Robotech. And now that our license is renewed for the, for the foreseeable future, it's a great time to talk about the Robotech 
live action film set up at Sony. Ah, yes. As you all know, in July 2017, Sony Pictures announced that IT director Andy Muschietti will be directing the live action Robotech movie. Two months later, in September 2017, Sony Pictures announced that Wonder Woman co-writer Jason Fuchs will script the live action film. And I want to give you a sense of what the next steps are. Currently, Andy is shooting the sequel to It. He's currently wrapping it up. It's in post-production. He had to do a few reshoots. We're waiting him to finish, finish up the sequel to It. While that is going on, Jason is writing the screenplay for the live-action Robotech movie. And while that is occurring, Harmony Gold and Sony are working to develop the live-action film while Tanzanoka, oh, well, sorry, well, the sequel to It is in post-production. <clears throat> and it's this last point that I want to highlight and explore a bit further today. Namely, the relationship between Sony Pictures and Harmony Gold over the next 18 months. When Harmony Gold signed the contract with Sony, the entire Harmony Gold team celebrated. <laughs> and after we celebrated, we moved on to the next phase. That next phase was answering the large amount of questions Sony Pictures had about Robotech. See, these questions all began back in the spring of 2015, when the deal with Sony was first announced. Numerous Sony executives began asking all of us questions about the franchise, and Sony wanted answers. So to get these answers, Sony invited us all over to their studio in Culver City in November 2016. And when we arrived at their gate, we were escorted directly into the Sony Pictures executive boardroom. Once there, we began to set up for the, for the presentation and we gave each executive a Robotech toy and a brochure outlining the history of the franchise. Once we began, our presentation, we started to talk about the history of Robotech, its performance, and you know how well it does overseas, and all these sort of really deep technical questions. And while we were going into this, the Sony executives stopped us and said, you know, this is all wonderful, this is amazing. However, we want more Robotech in the marketplace in the run-up to the live action film, since that would benefit everyone. To that end, the following agreement was struck. Sony Pictures granted Harmony Gold clearance to continue to create and license new animated Robotech merchandise. Woo! And while this, agree oh, this arrangement was beneficial for both parties, Sony and Harmony Gold are exploring ways to expand our partnership over the next 18 months. Are we still at Walmart? I'm sorry? Have you thought of Walmart? We're working on that. Okay? With our partnership growing, I want to discuss how Robotech is moving forward. And to help explain our path forward, I want to bring in my colleague, Tommy Yu, to discuss about Titan Comics. Tommy, take it away. All right, now, um, you know, regarding what Kevin said, uh, I know a lot of questions that fans have, you know, Definitely, we can hear uh, why wasn't more being done with Robotech and with the previous relationship we had with a different studio back then. We were actually restricted in what we could do and uh, what we could bring to the fans. So you did a lot of fans did notice that the franchise became a lot quieter. There was less stuff out. There was less content. And one of the things uh, that we're grateful to Sony is that they really understand Robotech. They understand its value, and you. I think already everyone has seen the fruits of this new relationship is just the explosion of new Robotech content and merchandise within just the last couple of years. And at the forefront of that is Titan Comics. And the reason is that in a short time they've had the license, they've already matched 
the output of DC Comics and Wildstorm had in a longer period of time. So we're really grateful to Titan for that with their number one launch uh, in the comic marketplace. And uh, right now, um, the comics that they've released so far, uh, they're already past the 20th issue, which is pretty amazing, you know, um, since they've started publishing Robotech. And you can get these back issues on Comixology. You can also get the trade paperbacks. And uh, going further, um, the current creative team we have right now, we are so proud of them. This is Simon Furman and Henry Presetia. They've been working really closely together. Simon, as you may recognize his name, had been working on the Transformers comics for a long time. The fans highly respect him because he's very knowledgeable about the Transformers franchise. And when coming into Robotech, we, we were overjoyed to find out that he loved Robotech just as much. I mean, one, one of the things that makes uh, our jobs really uh, a lot easier working with Simon is we don't have to really correct him on continuity. He knows everything inside out. In fact, uh, the funny thing is uh, probably the biggest notes that we give him is because he's grown up in England, uh, sometimes we'll say, you know, this might be a better American idiom than an English idiom. Uh, but other than that, uh, his stories have just been spot on. The fans have responded. And uh, Henry also working together with him. They recently uh, launched a big comic event, and uh, this was on Free Comic Book Day. Um, this was a huge honor for Robotech. This is the first time Robotech has ever done this. Uh, this is to encourage more kids to read. Uh, as you may know, on May the 4th, which also lines up with uh, Star Wars Day, the comic stores uh, release a free comic book of major franchises on that day. So you might see a major DC Comics release, a major Marvel release, this is the first time we've ever had Robotech on Free Comic Day to allow fans to jump in. In fact, the biggest complaint we got was that there was such a run on these comics, many fans missed out on a chance to get these comics. Uh, so this is the zero edition, which was given away absolutely free for people to jump into Robotech into this new Event Horizon storyline. And uh, I'll show you the latest issue that's come out. You'll see right here you've got half of the issue, uh, half of the cover with Max, and half of it with the Regis. One of the things we're doing with the storyline, we're actually trying, uh, we're actually exploring something that Carl Masick always wanted to do ever since we looked at the graphic novel. He just wanted to mix things up. He wanted to combine the stories of the three different sagas into one whole as Robotech. So we have Mac Cross events crossing over into new generation events. And uh, this is also bringing many different continuities of Robotech together. And the thing is, uh, Simon's not shy at all in terms of experimenting with the storylines. Uh, uh, we'll show you a little peek here. He's even rolling Robotech 3000 into it. So uh, one of the things that, um, uh, in a way, was a challenge for Robotech. For the longest time, Robotech just had one continuity. And uh, during the 90s, for those of you who used to be on uh, Usenet, might remember, there used to be these unbelievable flame wars between fans who were bikiniists, who loved the novelization continuity, versus the Kamiko continuity, versus the original animation continuity. There used to be all talks about what is canon and what is not. And what was really interesting was um, Carl would talk about how all the different merchandise was covering basically the same story in a different way. He said, it's all meant to be organic. It's not meant to fit together perfectly. Each story is telling it in its best way for its medium. And uh, now with this Event Horizon event, we're exploring the possibility that Robotech has different continuities, different realities. And this has already been explored since the very first Titan comic. Uh, fans already knew that something was different. Things were being changed with a very specific purpose in mind. And so. Now, when fans see something different happening, happening, instead of saying, oh, why is this not canon? Now, they're thinking more of what does Simon Furman have up his sleeve? Uh, a little bit further. And uh, we also want to introduce, with this event, Horizon event, we are also introducing a new writer. And this is Brendan Fletcher. Uh, he's a highly respected, um, nominated writer who's uh, been working with Image on Isola, uh, which is highly acclaimed. We're glad to have him on board with Robotech. And he's also been working with Sarah Stone on a backup story. 
And this story is eventually going to grow and dovetail into where uh, Simon Furman is headed. And so uh, with us, Brendan considers this a, a great honor and a responsibility uh, to be building on the story that Simon has set up. And this is going to be coming out later this year. Uh, so uh, uh, I highly recommend, for those of you who can come to San Diego, he's going to be able to talk more about it at that time. But this is what's coming up next for the comics. And coming up next for merchandise, you know, a couple of people are asking me, and they're waiting out there, you know, where's like some of the bigger merchandise? Well, we have a three foot tall SDF1, which is currently going to be released by our friends at Kids Logic. It made its debut in Hong Kong a few years ago, and it's, it's coming, folks. Yes, and if you notice, it has LED lights. And look at the size of that thing. Yeah, it's, I've seen it, folks. It's enormous. And we also have an awesome new license called MEP Toys. And they have seven cross action figures in development. And I want to bring in our awesome mystery guest. His name is Carlos. Carlos, you are the founder of MEP Toys. Is it MEP Toys or MEP Toys? Uh, whichever you want. Whichever we want? Okay, whatever we want. Okay. It, it works. Carlos, tell us about your, your company, what your plans are. Yeah, so um, we are a group of fans that got together and we started actually designing toys. Um, we are focusing on Centrati, uh, Southern Cross, Envy, um, and uh, the toys that, you know, that um, don't have that much love to them. We have, uh, yeah, we, we have a really awesome team, which uh, if I can give thanks to them, um, we grab a, our team is global. We have a, a person in Argentina, Julian Cavada. He's one of our three sculptors. He does an awesome job. Uh, we have Chuck Deckett. He does a lot of our artwork for the boxes. Um, I have a, our first toy, Brick High. It's coming out. So it does a scale to the 1 100 Toyami uh, figures. Yeah, Carlos, uh, actually, can you share a little bit about your communication with uh, George Sun at Toyami himself? Yeah, so uh, back in October, we talked to George uh, from Toyami, and we were talking about what figures uh, he was working on and uh, coming up with ideas. And we decided to actually us, Mac Toys, will complement uh, most of the Toyami lines so we don't uh, flood the market with the same figures, right? So that's why we are focusing on Centrality and mostly bad guys. Because, uh, you know, <laughs> they don't uh, get toys very often. Um, also, I have, uh, if I mind, the second figure we are launching, we are working on the Southern Cross, but we got some feedback from, from you guys. So we are reworking some of the sculptures to make it uh, better. And I, we are working on the Invit Scout. I don't know if you can see it. You can all see it in really good detail here, right? Yeah. It's, uh, actually, we, we encourage after the panel is over, come, on, yeah. c come up, up and take a peek at the, what Carlos has brought with him. It's incredible. Yeah, it's a uh, scale to the Toyami Masterpiece uh, Alphas, so 155 scale ish. Uh, and we are going from there. So we are trying to make these. So we are a small startup company, so we are rolling slow and try to keep up with awesome employee companies that are out there, right? So Carlos, um, it's interesting that you're a different toy company than Toyami, but uh, you're actually, instead of you know competing with one another, you're actually, uh, in a way, almost like working on stuff that Toyami normally wouldn't be in Toyami's wheelhouse. Right, right. I, I like to uh, work on win-win scenarios. You know? it's, I like to build each other instead of you know, try to destroy each other. So that's our philosophy. <laughs> so this is something that, uh, you know, Carlos has a social media presence. Uh, his toy company's on uh, Facebook. Uh, give him feedback, like stuff that normally wouldn't be within Toynami's product uh, line range, because normally Toynami goes after the most obvious product lines. You know, they're basically being run like a larger business where 
they have larger minimum order quantities, like they have to manufacture at least a few thousand uh, to make it economical for them. Uh, Carlos, with a smaller company, can actually do stuff that Toynami normally would be able to do. Right. And um, yeah, so give us feedback. We try to listen to all the feedback we get. And I, I'm, we're trying to show love to all the series across, um, Shadow Chronicles, um, Sentinels. We have a, a growing library of 3D designs already that will come out as we can grow our capital, right? For example, I don't know if you can see. <laughs> well, it's hard to see, it's all gray, but we have a little Hellcat from uh, Sentinels that we have a 3D model of. Um, but hopefully someday we can actually make a toy. Yeah. But uh, that'll come in time. And Carlos, this uh, figure here is a uh, type battleship, right? Yes, yes. So with the Britype pre-orders, we have a little bonus, a little uh, one forty thousand scale uh, lipidic vernix. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Yeah. I'm surprised you pronounced that really well. Oh, good. And the pre-orders are still available? Yes, so you can still get com. this, and this is only available to pre-order customers here. Uh, the uh, retype flagship. Yeah, so through Robotech.com, we we have uh, limited quantities of it. Uh, through our website, it, they run out. So the only pre-orders with the bonus are that come with a little ship comes through Robotech.com at this point. Actually, Carlos, I have one quick question. Yes. It says here there's an ejection seat Rick Hunter figure. Ah, is that yes. a reference to when Retai and Rick fight in episode 11 and he ejects and he grabs him? Is that like, does that come with this? Yes, it actually does come with it. I, I got the inspiration from that. But I love that episode when Retai just punching this VF1, you know, beating it to a pulp and take a blast to the, his face and just be okay. So That's actually uh, interesting that uh, it's done to the scale of Toyami's uh, VF1 figure, so you can actually get both and recreate the scene. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of uh, the pipe that he gets from the, the ship. Although, well, tearing off Rick's chest plate is not covered by warranty. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. That's a good idea. Yeah. Uh, you, you should do the, uh, the bash and head alternate head. <laughs> do, do you want to torn off 1-100 scale VF1 to go with this figure? <laughs> OK, we can, we, we'll, we'll, work, we'll, we'll work on that. You know, and uh, speaking of the 1-100 scale VF1s, 